mambo etisen welcome and welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Ruth Kim if you're seeing me for the first time on my channel i share my own experiences as a foreigner living here in germany i share videos about africans in diaspora and sometimes it's just want to have fun so on today's video as you can see guys we have a special guest and as you can tell from the title we are going to talk about how to host an au pair and before i talk too much let me give my guest a few minutes to introduce herself Hey guys, how are you? Sasani Bonju. I hope you guys are doing good. Don't be scared about that greeting. It's something that I really love to use. Something that keeps me like uh motivated for the whole day. Guys, for those who don't know me, my name is Atsaza Said. Um I'm based in Germany. I've been living here for almost 15 years. <laughs> Sounds like a century. <laughs> I'm the CEO of Jumbo African Dishes, Jumbo Swag and Leas Fine Spices. And Ruth, thank you so much for having me in your channel. Thank you so much. I don't take this for granted. Asante san. And by the way, guys, she forgot to mention something very important to me. She has a YouTube channel. You guys have to check her out. You guys have to check her out. I promise you guys, if you go there, her channel is called Lea the Dream Chaser. Okay? And she has very yep. inspiring content. Click there, go subscribe, be a friend, and stay a friend. So, the reason why I have Leah here is because she has hosted more more than five years in the Thank last you. few years, and I know so many young parents out there who would like to try out this experience, but they don't even know where to start. And I believe Leah is the perfect person to take us through this process. Yeah, I know, guys. Some people don't even know what an au pair is. Au pair is a um, cultural exchange like program. Mhm. Mm where like young people go to foreign countries to help a host family take care of their kids like and do light house jobs right yeah yes and so many people confuse au pair and nannies is there a difference between au pair and nannies Leah? Mm -hmm. i think so much of a big difference is not but i think there is a difference because like an au pair you Mostly au pairs are from foreign countries, whereas you can get a nanny from the next village. Yes, and another thing is like a nanny can do everything and au pairs are not supposed to do everything. No. Right? They're supposed to take care of your kids yeah. and clean after themselves and after the after the kids, not like cleaning the house, ironing for you guys, no. My question number two is, what are some some of the things you need to know even before you start thinking of looking for an au pair? You need to know, first of all, you are going to be having this different person, somebody from a totally different culture, depending on where you take care. We've uh, mainly taken au pairs from Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. uh, Zimbabwe is one of our best countries. So uh, from South America, we've had from Cameroon. Mm -hmm. And um, currently we are half change student who is half German and half Polish. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the very thing that you really need to know before you get an au pair is that things are going to change. It will never be the same again. Mm -hmm. You are going to change completely because you are going to be having this lady, whoever is it, a man, because you also have au pairs who are uh, men. Like, mm -hmm. um, privacy is going to change and um, prepare yourself in a lot of things. This is somebody who you posted, you say it's like a family member. Actually, one of them became daughter till to date. Mm -hmm. This is somebody who's coming into your family. It's either going to bring a positive impact or a net impact to you, to your husband, to your kids. So mm -hmm. you have to, prepare, to be prepared with all this. You know, sometimes you say, oh, pair, I'm going to get help. But you forget you don't need this au pair 24-7. You're going to have that moment where you like fall back and say, let me rest. And she's there. What do you do with her? Just prepare yourself even mentally that things are not going to be the same. Yeah. Like, and you can't send her away. She's there to stay. Yeah, she's there to stay, and especially if she's somebody really, really uh, conser conservative, because we've had pairs who never went out. They just wanted to stay home all day. You can't go telling look for somewhere to go. Whereas we had pairs, they were just waiting for Friday. They know they are free and they are gone. You can't tell them go. They uh -huh. have the right to stay. That This is their new home now, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And and what about the cost? How much does an pair cost? It's different for us. We had our very first au pair cost around 700 euros. Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's different if you go to the internet and get an au pair for yourself, mm -hmm. you're going to cut costs. 
mm-hmm. then you have to sending things back and forth the paperwork but mm-hmm. if you take an agency what we do and i would recommend everybody out there if you want to get an au pair go through an agency because um we've mm-hmm. gone through hell having taken the wrong who was lying to us Mm-hmm. And if this happens in your the agency then you end up having the positive of getting an exchange mm-hmm. the agency fee so far because we've taken like four opias from the same we pay like 465 euros one um, time when you are paying once yeah like ah, okay. um you give a deposit and then when the opia comes you give the other deposit and then when you exchange because it could be that the opia comes and you don't get you don't get along uh-huh. you pay a fee of 200 euros to get a new replacement 200 and 80 ah okay so if you take an agent that means you are not going to do the process of sending her the document if she's coming from abroad uh-huh. the agency is going to do that they do all this for you you just have um, you have like your profile like my it's in frankfurt i have my profile where the opias get to view me i can view them and then they check mm-hmm. they shot the best because there are things you want maybe you want an opia who knows how to swim how to bike maybe piano or guitars so they'll give you the best three or ten then you mm-hmm. choose and when you say this is the lady that i want to have mm-hmm. the agency will tell you the kind of paperwork they want you'll send mm-hmm. them to the agency and that from there you just wait and he does the follow up for you which is really easy you know you don't have to keep calling like our first opia from cameroon it was so stressful it was mm-hmm. so so stressful because we were calling back and forth and then maybe she's available because where she lived was not enough coverage it was mm-hmm. but with the agency somehow other agencies over there so everything mm-hmm. becomes much easier for you and even for the opia herself ah uh, so the agent does everything including the visa process and everything everything what about the everything. interview with the opia do you get that chance to communicate with the opias you have to mm-hmm. you have to a couple of times not only once the agency advises you to do it a couple of times mm-hmm. and even with the key with your husband because a lot of times i remember our first two pairs i never involved band much i knew opairs about the mother you know the gasp here yeah? mm-hmm. but the others like uh, for him have a feeling because we've been disappointed too and mm-hmm. this time along i never wanted to be in the shit alone so i was like hey look at her just listen as she's talking what do you feel what do you think so mm-hmm. the agency will give you a chance to get to talk to them get to them, and when you give them a go ahead then you start you start the process And what are some of the things that you discuss with an au pair or what are the more important things that you as a host family you tell the au pair or you share with the au pair Okay I would say me personally being a Kenyan and a reason why I'm here to do that also came in as an au pair it's a bit different I find it a bit chill most of the au pairs will live with unless they can people their au pairs we never you could never tell mm-hmm. for me it's a little bit more of um you have to believe in god that's a and o it's mm-hmm. even written on my profile i even say it's kind of exaggerated you have into our home knowing that we are believers we pray mm-hmm. we do it more than you can ever like you know so if if you're not more for god then we are not the right people we've had au pairs that said no i don't believe in god i can't go family because you can also want an au pair and she says no i don't want this family and the agency asks them please write a reason that they can be okay with your reason and we've gotten a lot of them who say um they have nothing to do with religion don't want this so for me it's always very important to know if you are religious mm-hmm. whom do you stay with and mm-hmm. um want to come over here because we always have different reasons why we want to travel it's not just about the exchange thing or wanting to come uh, maybe take care of those babies you have your mm-hmm. plans which is okay it's legit i had my own but sometimes i think the last three au pairs are very careful because i knew um you just arriving maybe after one two three weeks, you start looking for that reason that brought you and then we are left stranded there with the boys mm-hmm. there are no more feeling no more genuine time mm-hmm. so i just try to work with this and instincts just wanting to know why you want to come to have family because au pairs who come in with family are totally different with au pairs who come in without family so to check an au pair mm-hmm. i think i would rather out of experience i would go for an au pair who doesn't have family in, or in germany to say in germany ah, that- an au pair who doesn't have family members here in germany for example yes because like if you have to over here she mm-hmm. already i don't know ruth um it's um it's a funny feeling i would not pair was assisted by in frankfurt and i'm living 20 kilometers away mm-hmm. they'll play you trust 
unless they are really genuine people, which we've had. We've had three genuine au pairs mm -hmm. and we've had three just you could feel, you know, they are talking and you they tell you something today, tomorrow they change the story. Because always updating what's going on, what will I ask, what will I do? I think I'll go for an au pair. It sounds really uh, like like I'm not that good, but I think you know it's nice to go somewhere where you have a sister. But for an au pair, I would be careful. If you are to take an au pair with family here, mm -hmm. maybe even family to even ask if she, I had an au pair who like she never had family, but her elder sister was here. She knew, she told me, meet the family here, get to know what kind of people they are, maybe, and see if you want to go for it. If not, somebody who is starting maybe from scratch that we can both grow. Because au pair is not only about the au pair. Don't forget the guest is also very desperate. That's where we're even taking the au pair, because we are desperate. It's not only about them, it's about mm -hmm. us. Yeah, now I get you. And it's good to be honest. And what are some of the uh, the questions that an au pair can ask you that are like a no go? When she's in Kenya, like in Africa, you should ask mm -hmm. me like, um, can I Friday and come back on Monday? Mm -hmm. Before she's even here, I think it's a no go. Because you've not even come. So I can't already plan what you, I don't know. Never ask questions as such, I swear. Because they are careful that you might not take them. I've, what question ask me? I think if they would ask me a question that would give me the feeling they just want to come over here. And enjoy life. Like, like, you know, I know they're coming. Yeah, I don't know. Like, like, um, like, I would like to say some, like for me, which would be no go. Like if you're still back wherever you are and then you start asking when, when do you have holidays? Or if you are coming to Hamburg, you start asking if is Frankfurt so far from Hamburg, you know? Like, yeah, where's the next club? Yeah, <laughs> like you're showing me you have more interest in the other things than my kids. Yeah, I think this is important for our pairs because sometimes host family ask you, Do you have something that you would like to ask us? Don't start asking about uh, the next holiday or, uh, or the next destination that you want to go, you know because that shows that you're not interested with the family you are more interested with the place that you're going mm -hmm. um, King, um maybe you know au pairs have a certain amount of hours that they're supposed mm -hmm. to work and you are still home you're not yet here i've not even maybe taken you and then you mm -hmm. kind of ask what happens when i work more than okay it's really it's right that you ask what happens when you work overtime because when mm -hmm. i was an au pair i worked really much and i never knew that i was supposed to be giving extra money you would mm -hmm. ask but don't show the family so much of um it's about the hours 30 hours a week you are really concerned it has to be 30 and that's it because i think this is always a thing of taking you know mm -hmm. you can't go asking like um wanting to show them i'm coming but it's about the five days and which days am i free and then you give the family this feeling like it has to be the way that you want it mm -hmm. i'll get the family to put this because ruth let me tell you the moment you give the family this feeling of um, you are going to be like uh, you'll take away the burden from them mm -hmm. which family will not want to invest in you one mm -hmm. yeah. we've done a lot we've sent a lot of paperwork for most of pairs mm -hmm. and it's just because they gave us the thing you did as good and we felt we have to give something back there's one mm -hmm. who's doing her driving right now mm -hmm. we pay registration for the driving school mm -hmm. why we don't have to but it's because of the way that she was to us so mm -hmm. the family this feeling of 30 hours what do you do after that or um when i'm not working go don't mm -hmm. ask them in Oh, you're here. Wait, get here, get to know them. See how the mom ticks times mothers will come from work and your head is like, mm -hmm. check your time. And you can always ask as time go. But if you don't like a family anyway, you can ask all this to also let them know that maybe you're not interested. But if it's a kid, you can get along. Mm -hmm. Be careful what you ask before. And mm -hmm. something else, you may I ask you about the cost of an au pair, but how much do they cost in a month? Like how much do you spend on an au pair a month? Um, once the au pair arrives, like when the uh, agency is now out, because once the au pair comes, you take over the, uh, you have the medical cover and it depends what cover you take. We have mm -hmm. the S, the M and the L, mm -hmm. but every au pair comes in, I think um, the minimum you can take is the M and that's about 45 euros. Mm -hmm before 45 euros for her insurance mm -hmm. and then um you have the pocket money mm -hmm. and with the pocket money it's different i think the list was 260 when we started taking us but i think right now it's at 280 if i'm not wrong mm -hmm. 
208, but we never got to pay this. We've always had my as our affairs because don't forget me, uh, I'm selfish. So you'll find like maybe I'm home most afternoons. Mm -hmm. And then maybe over the weekend, I'm not there. So we work with it like you get this to 80, that's 100 pure. And then I check at the odd hour that you work. And then we made a fixed amount of 350 euros every month that there. And then you pay for her insurance, that's 44, that's around 390, let's say 400. And mm -hmm. then you have to pay for their school. For the school, you either pay 50 euros every. But because the Fox of Shule mm -hmm. runs like maybe till April, January, and then they close. So what we did, we took over the cost for the school, but mm -hmm. they bought books. We didn't buy the books. Yeah, okay. And this what one is the... between family. Hmm? So what about the transportation uh, money, like buying a ticket and all that? Okay, that one we did like, um, I do a week, you do so in a month, I did, and she did two weeks. But this route uh, for the transport, I think most families, the au pair pay for themselves. If the au pair, if the family pays 50 euros for the school, mm -hmm. I think this is not complete. 50 euro for school every month is in the contract, mm -hmm. but about the bus ticket, no. This one is how you feel, like if things are moving, me, there are times I used to stay here for the week. It's also on the au pair. If the au pair is rude and she's already here and you don't want to have an exchange, mm -hmm. I don't even remind, even ask you how you're going to school because it's your time to go to school, you go, but it happened, I think, in one or two cases. Yeah. That is like here, 20 euros for your bus fare for this week. It depends how you feel and if the au pair is even showing sure her interest to go to school because some of them go to school, it's like they're being pushed. Ah, okay. And what you about uh, what about the house, Lea? How many rooms do you have to have? Do, do, do au pair have their own room or they can share with the kids? In our case, we never had where they shared. They had their own room. They have their bathroom downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, we were lucky that we had enough space. But I have a family that I know not far from us. They au pair a room with a, with a, a, a girl. She's eight. Ah, yeah, okay. like yeah. she has her separate bed and the girl has her separate bed and then she has her bathroom that they share with it on the space that they have and this you can sign in the contract. Mm -hmm. It's good that au pair has her own room because she needs friends, even good for you, you know. Yeah. It's not only about for her but also for you that you know that's her, that's where she has everything. She can just go in and lay back and have her own time. But um if you don't have, you can sign in there that they are going to share a room and then it's upon the opera to decide the meaning to a family where she's going to share or where she's going to have her own room. Mm -hmm. What about, yeah. I, have, I got but a But for the bathroom, you don't have to. They can share a bathroom. She can share our bathroom, but... Um, the room, it's have better the if the room is separate. What about this, Lea? Mm -hmm. Someone asked me a question like, She's African, and if she work in an African family, that they are going to treat her like a maid. It happens a lot, cause I know <laughs> this is very common. Like my second pair was an exchange South African family. The lady mm -hmm. was South African, the dad was German, mm -hmm. and um, she worked even in the night. I remember mm -hmm. one time I called her. We were supposed to meet, and she said we can't meet. I have to work till midnight. To midnight? Why? And um, I, it depends. Me too, beginning, I did a lot of mistakes, especially my third au pair. Mm -hmm. Because I just started my company and mm -hmm. you're here, you have to like outsource, you resource like work, you have students who are helping you do some stuff. Mm -hmm. Because she's there sometimes the whole day, she's been doing nothing. I'll tell her, could you help me do this? It happens. You cannot expect the same way you're going to work for a German family, the same way you're going. African, we have this mentality in us. Also find the au pairs themselves, unless you really came in knowing that I don't touch this, I don't touch this, they're always not willing to help. But it could happen that um, you feel like you're more of a maid. How does it look? You have that au pair and um, you're getting in somebody who is going to iron for you. Why can't you make a deal with the au pair? Okay, you're going to help me out with ironing on top of this. I think au pairs, all they need is money. If you pay them for this other job, mm -hmm. they don't feel bad. And Germans do this. Germans don't, okay, most of them. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, because I also have a, I had a group where we were like host moms, just to discuss what we challenges with au pairs, mm -hmm. um, that when she works, extra if a cleaner was to come and clean and get six euros the au pair gets the money and she does the job but if you as an african says hey 
I'm going to work rooms, do that, 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 and her money remains the same every day. Then she meets an opera who gets paid extra, and I feel like you're using them. But I think it's also a thing you get to talk with the opera. Yeah, and, the, and I think this yeah. is the yeah. Uh, I think this is one of the reason why most of us au pairs had that bad experiences because of miscommunication and not communicating with the host mother. Do you agree? Very true. Make her your friend. Of course, don't tell her everything, but try to make try to understand how she thinks, mm -hmm. how she reacts, mm -hmm. and then see if you can become friends. Because me, like my second opera, who is like my daughter, if you want to watch this, just go to my video of my experience with an opera. I spoke ninety mm -hmm. percent about her. She used to come massage sometimes my head, my nails. Mm -hmm. She was a sister to my kids. She remained like a she's like my daughter. Depends if the mother is good, why can't you become friends? But also not too much because you might end up opening up and ten before you realize <laughs> it's like you've become too close and there are no boundaries and then mm -hmm. it could work maybe for you have to weigh. How do you feel if she's somebody here along you can open up a bit like I would like to do this this and that but take your time don't come and just pour everything out the very far arrive mm -hmm. take your time get to see because sometimes if you don't talk mm -hmm. they start planning for the next opera and you wanted to work with them longer but because you never talked mm -hmm. before you realize the next opera is being checked so it's you to weigh how is my family are they open can I speak mm -hmm. should I be quiet huh the way with time as you live with the family mm -hmm. And something else I was thinking, like also about having bad experiences, like when the moment we come here, like you said, most of us have other plans. And because of those other plans, we end up not working the way we are supposed to work. Do you agree? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I told you, Ruth, I don't know if you watched our, this video with the au pair experience. Uh -huh. I got my au pair from the airport with my boys. We have our bouquet of flowers. We are waiting and waiting at the, the African lady and a guy. They are watching us the whole time. They knew about us, but we never knew about them. Mm -hmm. Our au pair arrives. They run, all take, do video call, speaking French. She's arrived, she's here. And I thought, hey, <laughs> I never knew, you know? <laughs> You didn't and even she had she two has... mm -hmm. No, and she had two suitcases and a hand luggage. And the biggest suitcase went with this lady. That was her sister. I mm -hmm. felt cheated from the moment she arrived. And I just mm -hmm. parked on the highway. I remember at one petrol station and I called my husband. I said, something is wrong. There's a movie going. And he said, just come, let's see. And we figured out she was not even the opera that we had actually been communicating with. Mm -hmm. That lady left her country knowing 100%. Mm -hmm. My sister will come to the airport, my luggage up, my sexy clothes for the club, because that's what we later talked. She had things that she go out. So she knew from the word go, I'll be with the family, weekends mm -hmm. I'm with my sister, we go out looking for all this. But she, we felt cheated from the word go. And when you do this, look, she ended up changing mm -hmm. within the first two weeks, because she had a hidden agenda. So how can she even perform when she already knows from the word go at the airport, she started lying. Mm -hmm. She can't even work. And those who maybe stay for two, three, four months, it's okay. But you can never work effectively when you know you are about to death family to get into plan B. And then and, you and, end up and, messing your And this is what most mm -hmm. of us used to do, Leah. You get here after one week, someone calls you, Ruth, if you want to remain in Germany, you have yes. to do this and this. So you end up, you are in a family, but you're not there mentally. You're just there because you have to be there, yeah. but your mind is somewhere else. And that's why we ended up making so many mistakes. Mm -hmm. I feel like if so many au pairs would communicate with their host families, maybe you have to get to know your host family first before you tell them everything but if you communicate you let them know what your plans are i think most of the families are going to help what you what do you think of course of course because they know they know mm -hmm. what it's all about it's the first au pair that you're taking and you've never even had a family that had an au pair mm -hmm. to share an experience but 
most families are usually ready to help because after all when you finish your contract your time is up it's time for you to go mm-hmm. that means me as a family i would not i'm glad that all the pairs that came mm-hmm. in really stayed in germany mm-hmm. only one went back but she went back because she chose to go back not because she will go Mm-hmm. So the family would know. They know that you are coming and you are coming either to stay to advance, maybe you mm-hmm. want to stay for whatever reason you want, but they know. The only thing that they feel bad is when they feel cheated. Like you are trying to act smart and yet the family already knows what you are up to. Mhm. And what are some of the challenges you have faced being a host? Being a host, hosting a fa- uh, an opera. The challenges we faced Mm-hmm. Okay, that of privacy, um, a very big challenge. You know, when we heard like our time and the OPA said, I'm going and she was gone, you could feel there's something happening from up to down without having to care. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of sometimes you even want to tell your husband that thing and even be able to remove it because there's that OPA watching you. Mm-hmm. You can't be loud because sometimes you want to be loud. You can be loud. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, um, I would say this then of course having an african opera who speak something different from you like a different language which have had one lady from south america with the zimbabweans it was different mm-hmm. i never had them sit down and speak something be uncomfortable mm-hmm. um one thing that i faced that i think was really really not good but it's because i made the mistake letting opias get to know your friends is very dangerous this advice any guest mother out there and mm-hmm. even opias who want to come in if i would come i would give you a tip want to know your guest family's friends too much mm-hmm. i would say put this bound as much as you respect this family that has hosted you that you respect the friends because mm-hmm. i did this you know like you have an opia and then somebody new opia come and help me maybe to clean and give her 20 euros or 30 euros mm-hmm. you are messing up everything so mm-hmm. through the discussing gossiping before you realize it it's through your opia that mm-hmm. information leaves your home and goes to the next family this was a very big challenge for me and i regretted so much mm-hmm. which i said with the next opia i'm not doing this take my opias anywhere before i carry them with me that they can see around but i realized i'm not the right person from around my husband is the right person he's born here mm-hmm. you know the yes. much i can do maybe drop them to the train pick them up mm-hmm. you know print them out stuff where you can go where you can visit arrange all these going to be sleeping mm-hmm. whom are you meeting this i pull but this thing of taking them to every kenyan party you are going mm-hmm. messing completely mm-hmm. this i would not do and if i'm if i'm an au pair i would not even want to follow my guest mother everywhere let her go have your mm-hmm. own time when the mom says she's your free to do your thing mm-hmm. this was a challenge for me and another thing that was very hard is when our almost three good pairs were leaving kids could not let go it was very hard one of them i cried my husband cried and um, i felt so empty and then there was one from ivory coast and when she left nothing went on for almost four weeks my kids were not eating and this was really stubborn we wanted to say goodbye mm-hmm. you know yeah this is not this separation time when time comes they have to leave mm-hmm. and there were people who are so dear to your kid i think those are the main challenges otherwise i think the other things are manageable because i was once an opera so didn't look like challenges i thought <laughs> like it's the way that it is yeah. and and what would you tell like people out there who want to try this experience like hosting an opera um it's not a bad experience if you know the reason why you want to do it or want to just come into the country for you to be able to settle down and that's the mentality you have from the word go it might be a bit genuine Mm-hmm. because um things might not go the way that you want them to go but if mm-hmm. you can come in with a mindset there's one lady my daughter she mm-hmm. came in with this idea of an exchange program i'm coming to learn the language culture mm-hmm. as i see what comes and she mm-hmm. started she's working for one of the banks in germany you know? mm-hmm. and she's happy although she came with actually i think she's the most successful opera that we had when she came in when i look at her was not even the same way i came here yeah, and when i come in after one year i have to get married get my babies come here didn't have this thing i want to study what did you want to study in kenya <laughs> i done my thing so i didn't want to go back home 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I thought if I study, I'll never earn money. For me, it was very important that I get into the country and start counting. So I didn't want to go back to school to do anything that could take away my time and it's not bringing money. Mm-hmm. So he said, why are you coming in? I would advise anybody out there if you want to come to Germany and do uh, the program. Mm-hmm. If you want to go to school, maybe inquire everything before you get here. For mm-hmm. you to just have a rough idea, you need to start something and how much time do you need for your paperwork to be ready. Mm-hmm. If possible, share with me because school is anything any guest family would understand. Any host family would if there's a family who didn't support you for you to go to school, mm-hmm. then maybe they are also wrong. But also have this plan B, like if the family and my paperwork, there mm-hmm. is this money that I have that maybe I can put into the bank. Or you have this who can sign your paper, inquire before you come in and don't come with too many expectations because that's the way you come in, land mm-hmm. into problems. And before you realize it, you are just living a different kind of life that you never be cool because there are people who are here and they are doing things they never even thought they could do. And also this thing of having maybe friends, pairs or pairs, misfeed or pairs also. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's an au pair already in the country. She's telling you, I did this, I did that. Most of me remember when I was an au pair, we used to be asked, <laughs> you end up panicking. <laughs> you end up panicking and then you start doing things. Me, I was supposed to do that. I would never even want to tell anybody to even dare. Because I thought if they've all patterned, how am I going to do? I love mm-hmm. that person. I learned that over here. I mm-hmm. came from a very strict background. Very, yeah. And I used to think going to make it fast. No. Is this what you want to get yourself into? Because if mm-hmm. you know you want to come into Germany, yeah, back mm-hmm. of your mind, you want to get married. Don't invest too much in school. Because then yeah. what do you want? Know what you when you know what you want, you'll be able to work for it. Mm. What about those people who want to host an au pair? For those who want to host, I would say um, ask yourself actually why you want an open in the first place because we also have different things. You can take in somebody who is doing uh, the socialist, yeah? Mm-hmm. The FSEO, I think they call it BFD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. FSEO, check an exchange program student. A mm-hmm. lot of Canadians, Australians do do. Mm-hmm. Um, Benja is a little way, personally, for au pairs, there's this thing, if they are dating, you want to know how is it, because if they get pregnant, you know you as a host mother, what's up. I realized with the lady that we're having right now, I sleep better when I had an au pair. Mm-hmm. If you're a guest mom out there, who wants, a host mom who wants to bring in somebody, inquire about abilities apart from the au pair, because au pair is a sensitive program. Mm-hmm. It's something that is really helping out, so very sensitive as far as we family are concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Pre-self, have that room, mm-hmm. activate your nap, players can get your naps to the edge. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I was not clear too, I'm not speaking evil, but prepare yourself, mm-hmm. be ready to have a new experience and um, it's working. But I think for me, for today, after having so many au pairs, I think I would not go for an au pair. I would either take somebody who is, um, cause then she's thinking different and the kids are grown up now, yeah? I'll check maybe FSJ because I know that in the school the whole day or working. She comes in the evening, maybe weekend, she's not there. She has something she's doing outside here. So we can help each other according to the times she has and my times if it works. Ah, but for so us, you, 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 so you host someone who is doing FSJ and then you guys can help each other gain anxiety. Of course, like my daughter, she uh, stayed with me for 18 months. Mm-hmm. She finished her one year and then we extended another six months, mm-hmm. which every family can do actually. Mm-hmm. Because if you are not ready with your paperwork, you can request your family to extend. They mm-hmm. do it. The, the Auslander behavior is aware of, they do this. So she stayed with us for 18 months and mm-hmm. then she got an FSO to the uh, psychologically ill kids. Mm-hmm. And I talked to the uh, how do you call them? Uh, Rotes, Dutchess Rotes Kreutz, mm-hmm. who are taking over her contract. And I told them, since you don't have accommodation for her, what mm-hmm. if we made a deal? I give her accommodation, mm-hmm. you give her the contract. Yeah, yeah she needed a contract. Mm-hmm. And then we share the times. It works, you just need to talk, really. And she was given the contract, mm-hmm. and she used to work with me till four. Mm-hmm. And then after four, she went in the afternoon. Ah, she stayed okay. home till four o'clock at the evening shift. And mm-hmm. it worked perfectly fine. So she was with my kids in the afternoon for like two to three hours, because then they were still small. Our youngest was like three years. Mm-hmm. She was with them after the kindergarten before I came back home. And when I came home after the three hours, she went in for the job. So she was actually earning two times, because she had the first yacht money. 
that she earned the 330 euros mm-hmm. and for the time that she was helping me we made a deal of how much we're going to give her i didn't pay her insurance they paid her insurance mm-hmm. so at the end of the day i think for the family or it's more easier to take somebody who is doing a face yacht but she not always be there because a face yacht is a full time thing it's not something you say i'm going for four hours it's full time they have yeah, to work for 38 to 40 hours a week mhm i know she it's a full time yeah, but job but you don't need the all mhm full time but there are mothers who take opias and you need the opia for three hours why do you take an opia to stay the whole day mm-hmm. and yet you only need her for a couple of hours then you can try plan b ah That, that's nice that's nice i i think i have exhausted my questions i think i'm done with the questions and i think all, all young parents out there should try out this experience or they should try maybe hosting someone who is already here as a nephesiot or mm-hmm. uni yes we have so many students especially those people who are oh, living yeah. in the city Mm-hmm. they can also host like students mm-hmm. you give them free space to to stay and they help you with the kids you know i think yeah. this is what leah tried to say and leah yeah. do you have something else you want to add something else you would like to tell us actually not i'll just say enjoy the experience you being a host if there's somebody watching this that would like to host an au pair mm-hmm. enjoy the experience and for the au pairs i would say come in and just um be open minded yeah and go about what you want we all have dreams and if this is the place where they are going to come true like for me i would say this is a place i would never want to leave very soon because uh-huh. i'm just loving everything up and the reason that brought me in was that opia that uh-huh. somebody else want to use to come in just do your thing smartly my way was a bit longer uh-huh. and um i'm grateful i got where i got but i made a lot of mistakes i got misled and i would just say come in look for people who have made it look for peers who've made it who've studied maybe they have their jobs and let mm-hmm. them advise you don't look for somebody who's also maybe trying to struggle her herself has not yet gotten her way out mm-hmm. and she's the one who is advising you you might end up falling a lot of problems wasting a lot of time because i realize we waste a lot of time also when you come in as an au pair maybe mm-hmm. in africa you're already earning money but you come mm-hmm. in here with some jobs that you'd never imagine doing when you're back in you know so mm-hmm. use this moment to really plan yourself for the next move but do it mm-hmm. smartly be smart thank you so much lea thank you so much for yeah, coming and uh, we hope to Terrible. see you soon we hope to have you back asante sana very soon thank you and guys like i said go check out her channel subscribe and stay yeah, fun yeah. <laughs> stay fun and come back yeah. and- Go back there comment on a video and say you're from Ruth Kim Jamini eh